Welcome everyone. My name is Natan Stelnitsky and I'm the team lead of the data streams team, which is part of Server Guild uh, core services teams. And uh, I have a double challenge now because you're after lunch, all on your beanbags. So uh, I hope uh, I give you enough uh, excitement to, to stay awake and alert. So this year we've led uh, a huge effort to migrate from our self-hosted Kafka clusters to a multi-cluster, fully managed Kafka cloud service. And uh, this really was uh, a very big effort. We meant, went through several designs, all in order to achieve a goal of completely seamless and transparent and safe and production safe migration. And similarly to the Maven to Bazel migration that maybe some of you remember, it really did feel, feel like changing the engines of airplanes mid-flight, only with this effort, most of the, the work and, and facing the challenges was done by the data streams team uh, in order to make sure that it is completely transparent to all of the owners of the topic, consumers and producers. So you just migrate and they are oblivious to, to the fact. And uh, so we really worked hard on it, implemented, executed during the day, dreamt about it during night. It's all we could think about. So let's see what happened. And in the last couple of years, uh, the Kafka usage of Wix has really grown. So we see numbers here per specific data center. We used to have like around 5,000 topics and now we're more than 20,000 topics and it's getting all the time. Actually, this data is a bit old right now. And uh, it's used to be more than uh, 45,000 topics, but now it's more than 200,000. Actually, it depends how you look at it. It could be 300,000. And, uh, and of course, also traffic itself really grew a lot uh, during the last few years. So what, did, what this caused? Basically, it caused uh, the self-hosted clusters to be overloaded with metadata, too many topic partitions per one single Kafka cluster, which meant we started to get unstable production, especially if some uh, broker goes offline and then uh, comes back online. It took forever for it to recover and uh, started to get even, we had an incident with uh, bigger error issues when uh, connecting to, to, to the Kafka cluster. So we decided we need to do something and we're going to not only split this cluster to multiple clusters, but we're also going to switch to a managed solution and uh, with on Confluent Client. Now, why migrate away from self-hosted? Well, so with Confluent, you get really much better performance uh, tune-ups and uh, flexibility. They will... Uh, are they are in charge of rebalancing between the brokers and everything that needs to be done over there. We have a transparent version upgrades. So Kafka keeps getting bug fixes and great updates and performance improvements. And this way we just easily get them. And it's really easy to add new clusters. So we, we need this now because our scale has grown so much. And the cherry on top is the tiered storage. So now, messages, old messages on, on the Kafka topics can go to S3 and stuff like that automatically behind the scenes in Confluent Cloud, which means that we can actually increase retention for our topics uh, a lot more once we completely switch over to Confluent. Now, okay, you say, what's the big deal about switching? So you just, I don't know, switch uh, connecting. You connect it to one URL, connect it to another URL. What's the big deal? So the challenges here were we needed to do this with zero downtime. That's the decision where it was made. So traffic keeps continuing completely normal. And uh, we have to do this even though traffic is still happening, consuming and producing are still happening all the time. And we need to do this for and support, uh, do this for 1,500 developers, 200, 2,200 microservices. So a ton of, of, of topics and a ton of uh, consumers producers that we need to do this for them uh, by our team. And of course, we had to have in place a safe rollback mechanism. And if there's some problem, we need to fail fast. We can't afford lose any messages. 
we can't afford like have huge uh, reprocessing of messages right now. So it's a very um, delicate and, and accurate work that we needed to do. And of course, to have uh, high automation done, we have so many topics, so many partitions. Okay, so today you will see how uh, should you work with mo the multi-cluster environment, uh, in not only in Scala, uh, all of uh, uh, Wix R&D. And behind the scenes look, you will see uh, what does it mean, uh, all of the stuff I talked about, how can we design for a successful and safe migration. And what did we gain from all of the work that we, we, that we already did? So we have a lot of new cool infrastructure in place that can really help us uh, in the long term. Okay, so multi-clusters. We, uh, we had a decision made that we are going to split the clusters according to uh, Wix segments. So we have the editor segment uh, for flows uh, for Wix users and the viewer segment for public user of users flows. And, we, and the decision was to split the clusters, clusters according to these segments. Basically, reduce the blast radius and make sure that if something terrible goes wrong in one of them, it doesn't affect the others. And we also have the others cluster, which is for CI CD pipelines and also for migrations. Now, uh, not all uh, data centers at Wix have all of the clusters. So, depending if you have. Uh, editor flow traffic uh, or not. So you see here that, well, basically public DCs uh, will have access to public uh, clusters. And here, uh, I hope you can see that uh, it's really simple. If you use the Greyhound API, it's really easy to add uh, the, the cluster uh, for your consumer, the producer, you said .users .public, and that's it. Uh, you work like that. And we want to uh, introduce uh, the ability in tests to know that you're producing consuming to the incorrect uh, cluster because we think this uh, could happen a lot and we want to avoid that. Now, one of the efforts that we made is to consolidate uh, the two Greyhound versions into the same engine of Greyhound NG, the rewrite that we, that we did a couple of years ago, meaning that the multi-cluster support and connecting the Confluent and all of that was only done in uh, Greyhound NG and then uh, the legacy Greyhound uh, is actually no more. There's no, it's not the engine of anywhere at Wix. It's just a thin wrapper API for Bootstrap, for, uh, for Loom, and it uses Greyhound NG behind the scenes. And then we needed all of the other uh, services, platforms, middleware to also support multi-cluster. So it's Scala, uh, Loom Prime, uh, you specify a segment. Uh, when you uh, create a domain event, domain entity, you specify a segment. And uh, also, a lot of libraries had to choose if they work in one cluster or not. So, Hadron, Time Capsule, all of Scala, of course, changed. But we're not talking only about Scala. Actually, usage of Greyhound is really massive at Wix. We have, of course, all Node.js area. So, we have the Greyhound sidecar. It's Greyhound as a service that serves them. And there, we also needed to add the multi-cluster support all the way through for all the Node plugins. And, uh, and for the node time capsule, et cetera. And also for serverless. Serverless also, of course, supports uh, this ability now. And uh, data pipelines, BI organization, system infrastructure, also uh, utilize Greyhound Sidecar for uh, all the stuff they've written in Go services. So the, this was a, a big effort by a lot of infra teams at Wix to support the new multi-cluster architecture. And here you can see a little bit of example uh, how to use it in Node. You specify greyhound.cluster.public uh, or how you specify an entity uh, uh, segment uh, for the entity in Proto. So a lot of, a lot of the, these definitions will happen in Proto with, with Loom Prime Nile and uh, with single runtime in the future as well. OK, cool. So it should be relatively simple to, to work with uh, in a multi-cluster environment. Now, let's see uh, the bigger challenge of this project, which is actually to migrate all the messages seamlessly and safely. So like I said, we had our self-hosted Kafka clusters, and they really became uh, overloaded. Um, the brokers uh, stopped being balanced, uh, and there were issues with that. Too many partitions, and we started to get real production impact. 
So we decided we're going to do the split to multi-cluster, switch to Confluent, and we said, okay, let's just uh, drain the traffic from a specific data center, and then uh, we will switch some uh, feature toggle in Greyhound, and everyone will just switch. Uh, you're connected to self-hosted before, now you're connected to Confluent, and no data is lost because there's no traffic in the data center. But uh, this whole plan was cancelled because we understood that, uh, first of all, uh, that we have applications at Wix that can't really move fr uh, from data center to another data center like BI. But most importantly, we, we understood that once we start the operation of this migration, the system will not be able to redirect traffic to, uh, back to the data center. So it was a really big risk that we'll be like stuck in the middle in some limbo and uh, in fact, it, it was ju just, it was a simple plan, but it was too risky. So we said, okay, what does it mean to actually migrate with regular traffic? Oh boy, so uh, that's uh, much, much more complex, and we'll see uh, how we achieve that. And we, we put all kinds of stuff in place, and a semi-manual automatic script that uh, is orchestrates everything, and we migrated uh, the big topics uh, earlier this year. And right now we're finishing the long tail of uh, all, all the topics at Wix with a fully automated flow. So we understood that we're going to need to do this completely seamless and production safe. What does it mean? So for that, we have um, a few new services in place. Uh, well, before the services, we needed to actually control Greyhound externally. Usually you just like provide to, to Greyhound the, the user handler code in the consumer and, and that's it. But here we actually needed to tell Greyhound what to do from outside and it's deployed all around Wix with uh, thousands of services. So we needed to tell it to uh, unsubscribe from a self-hosted cluster and subscribe to the correct cluster in Confluent. So we understood that in order to avoid losing any messages, we're going to have to have a brand new replicator service that first we tell it, okay, start replicating data from legacy to Confluent, so that once Greyhound is told to do the switch, it will be able to um, already start with, uh, with messages that are uh, put there before we actually migrate the producer itself. Right? First you migrate consumers, you don't want to lose any messages, only then you migrate producers with the help of a replicator service. Now, the replicator service not only replicated, like consumed from, uh, from self-hosted produced to Confluent, but it also kept track of the offsets for each topic partition, and it knew uh, what is the delta for uh, each partition. So if we have offset 50, in self-hosted for these partitions, uh, we need to m now start at zero in Confluent, so the delta is minus 50. And all of this information gathered by the replicator was then transferred to Greyhound. So Greyhound was able to know that when it starts uh, subscribing to uh, the consumer, starts subscribing to listen to new events in Confluent, it says, oh, okay, I need to seek to this offset because I, the last committed message was X, so this is the delta, and now I'm going to start from this place in Confluent. And this way, we don't lose any messages and there is no double processing. So quite a, a big challenge uh, to do. And uh, so just go over the, the steps here. We're replicating to Confluent, and then we send the command to Greyhound, unsubscribe. We, we then uh, verify there is absolutely, it's automatic, right? We verify that uh, there is no active consumer in any topic partition in the self-hosted uh, cluster. And then a little bit lag develops, but then once we figure this out, the script uh, and the uh, relevant services like the migration orchestrator then uh, tells Greyhound, okay, you've completely unsubscribed. Now, please subscribe fully to Confluent. And then again, the script and the services verify that all the topic partitions have migrated. And of course, uh, we also have the ability to immediately roll back 
if there's some topic partition that has failed for some reason, some part is stuck. So uh, we, we are alerted on that and we can uh, immediately roll back and nothing happened, right? Maybe there was a little bit double processing uh, because we, when we come back to the legacy consumer, uh, then um, we need, we'll start off from the, the first place that the last committed. But uh, as long as the rollback is done pretty fast, it does, it's not a big impact. And if you've been to the CDC uh, lecture before, you have to have your consumers either put in the weeks because we have at least once processing. So it, it should be okay. So because we did uh, all of the effort of consolidating both Greyhound versions into the same engine, and because we have all of this ecosystem at Wix, uh, that everything under the hood actually at the end is powered by Greyhound engine, this really made our life easy uh, for uh, the migration itself because we are only send commands to Greyhound. We don't care about the node application on top of Greyhound sidecar or data pipelines, all we, we care about is the actual CAF consumer that Greyhound runs uh, by itself. So all we had to do is make sure that all of the artifacts are GA'd with a new version of Greyhound. And, uh, and then we could actually migrate this entire ecosystem. We have very cool infrastructure to control Greyhound from outside of your service. So, so now we can actually uh, have uh, new features in Greyhound back office in Greyhound admin to actually do cool stuff uh, that you that you want to do uh, with a lot greater control outside of Greyhound. So, for instance, you decided that you want to switch cluster. Okay, part of the process will be to actually go to the back office and switch, or you want to skip messages because for some reason you have like a million messages in the topic that completely not interested to you, and you want to skip the processing. Okay, no problem. We'll tell Greyhound to unsubscribe, change uh, offset, and, and start again. So you'll, do, you'll be able to do that from the back office. And also change processing rate. Maybe you want to limit the amount of, of parallelism uh, in a specific uh, pod, or increase it, or in introduce throttling. You'll be able to do all of that because we introduce infrastructure to control Greyhound consumers from outside of the service. Okay, so what uh, have uh, you seen today? We migrated from self-hosted to Confluent Cloud, multi-cluster environment, a bit more complex to manage as a user, but not too bad. Just specify dot users, dot public, dot others, and you're done with it. And um, we were able to do this uh, with completely automatic processes, uh, completely safe, and gradually uh, throughout uh, all the services of the weeks and uh, should be finished by uh, the end uh, of uh, the year. And uh, yeah, really proud of that. So thank you very much.